Story 1 Scariest moment of my life happened while my friend and I were camping in eastern Canada as teenagers. We decided to sleep in this abandoned camper we found deep in a large forest that was near our town. It had been there so long that small trees had grown around it. We'd stumbled across it when we were exploring a few months back and thought it would be cool and brave to sleep there for a night. So one weekend we did it. We arrived after dark because we had gotten lost trying to find the camper. We had a really low power flashlight, so it made it even more difficult. Once we finally found it, we opened the rusty door and stepped in. The sounds inside the camper were shrill and echoey. There were typical camper things strewn about. Cups, empty cans, swollen pulp fiction novels. Already tired, we holed up in one end of the camper where the bed area had originally been before the cushions had rotted away to almost nothing. A long hallway stretched the length of the camper so we could basically see from end to end. It was a miserable night. There were several rats living in there. I saw them staring at us from a chewed out part of the ceiling. When the wind blew outside, the camper would shriek and groan. We even thought we heard a bear outside too, walking around. Still, we feigned bravery and acted like we were having a good time. But we were on edge. At some point, I woke up from an uncomfortable sleep. I sat up to adjust myself when I noticed some movement out of the corner of my eye. At the other end of the camper, there was a small window, and as I looked at it, I saw a man's silhouette. He was clearly staring straight at me from outside. At first, I thought maybe it was a weird shape of a tree or something, but when I moved a bit to get a better look, the person clearly reacted and then froze. My heart was pumping, and I woke up my friend immediately saying, Someone is here over and over and over in a whisper, not taking my eyes off his profile. He woke up immediately and I nodded towards the window. He saw him too. We whispered frantically about who it could be and why was he staring at us. And for the next 10 minutes, no joke, we stared him down. The longer we stared at him, the more frightened we got. Occasionally he would move, but always keeping his eyes locked on us. Eventually I shouted at him, hey, no reaction. My friend was braver than me and decided to shine the flashlight at him. As soon as he did, we realized our horrible mistake. It wasn't a window at all on the other side of the camper. It was a mirror. We had been staring down ourselves from the very start. Completely idiotic. Still, it was the most fearful, relieving, and funny moment of my life that I'll never forget it. Closest to paranormal I've ever been. Story 2, I posted this a few months ago in a similar thread. Apologies for the length. Back in 2007, my grandpa finally lost his 20-year battle with leukemia. My grandma couldn't manage well, being alone in the house they'd lived in for almost 60 years. We moved my grandma into an assisted living residence a few months later, and for insurance reasons, vacant property, my parents asked me if I'd like to move into the house so that I could watch the house, and also to move out and not live at home. I said, absolutely. I remember right after he passed away, strange things started happening. The portrait we had of him in the living room fell off its hook. Picture frames containing pictures of him flipped on to their front during the night. I didn't mind though, because I thought my grandma was making it up. Before I moved in, my family got a big dumpster so we could clean some of the clutter out of the house. Since we'd spend most of the day cleaning and it was summer, we'd bring the family dog with us. My grandpa loved our dog dearly, but since he passed, my dog wouldn't go down to the basement anymore, where my grandpa spent most of his time in his office. She refused to go into the basement at all and barked at the stairway a few times. This was weird since our dog almost never barked. It finally made me think he's here. I moved in shortly after. While I lived there, things went missing all the time. I had bought a new lock set to change the back door lock, brought it home, and put it in the cupboard to tackle on the weekend. A few days later, I go to change the lock and it's gone. After a week of looking around, I finally found it in the trunk of my uncle's old BMW 2002, which he stored in the garage. I happened to be looking at the car. My grandpa was always a prankster, so I almost came to expect these occurrences. He used to wake up at 530 every morning to listen to the early news on the radio in the kitchen. I'd wake up some mornings and the radio would be on. I often heard typewriter noises coming from his office in the basement. It became comforting. I found myself talking to my grandpa out loud, having conversations with him. I missed him. After about six months, 
Suddenly, I wasn't hearing any noises anymore. Nothing was going missing. The radio wasn't turning on at 530. I shrugged it off for a few days, but it started to worry me. I went back to my parents and grabbed the dog, brought her back. She was apprehensive at first, but she entered the house. There was an issue, though. Every time she'd been over since my grandpa died, as I mentioned earlier, she refused to go downstairs. This time, though, she went downstairs and went right to his office. Nothing was any different about the office, but she wasn't barking. She wasn't pacing. She wasn't doing anything. That was when I realized he was gone. I broke down. Suddenly, I felt incredibly alone. Even though it had been about eight months since he died, it was the first time I felt like he was gone. Story three. One I posted before. I'll be the first to say that all this stuff could have taken place in my head. The mind is a freaky thing and can play some pretty trippy tricks on you. Sorry for the length. Whenever I was scared as a kid, my dad had always told me that in life, you should not be scared of ghosts. Fear the living because they can actually hurt you. In my late teenage years, I came into the some money after my father committed suicide and I received an inheritance from him. At time of my dad's passing, he and my mom owned a cabin up in Oregon by Mount Bachelor. The cabin had been put up for sale since my mom could no longer afford the payments and renting it out was not covering the payments either. The cabin was set to go on the market for sale in less than a month and was in the process of finalizing all the paperwork with the realtor and lawyer. So for that month's time, the cabin was not going to be rented out any longer and was going to be vacant. I saw this as a chance to get away for a while and clear my head in light of all the things going on. I quit work, packed up my snowboarding gear, grabbed my dog and headed up in my dad's car that he had willed to me to the cabin. Now this was our family cabin that my parents rented out throughout the year when we were not using it. I had keys to the cabin and also had the code for the alarms, so I did not feel the need to stop at the rental management company and advise them of my stay. This has nothing to do with the coming story, but felt the need to mention it anyway. My first two days at the cabin were normal and nothing out of the unusual happened. Spent my days playing with my dog in the snow, snowboarding in the evenings playing PlayStation or listening to music, drinking and smoking out on the balcony. Had already stocked up on food, cigarettes and liquor, so I was pretty much a shut-in aside from the occasional out to hit the slopes. With my dog as company and DVDs, PlayStation as entertainment, I was quite content and started to feel relaxed after all the drama that had preceded my outing. The cabin itself was two stories. Bottom story had the living room and a side guest bedroom along with small kitchen. Upstairs had another two rooms along with a walkout balcony attached to the master bedroom. Most of my time there was spent either in the living room, kitchen, or master bedroom. I never ventured into the other rooms and always kept the doors leading into them shut. Open doors to dark rooms always creep me out. Anyhow, the third day came around, and I was going through my usual routine of playing with my dog. His name was Midnight, by the way, and he also since passed. Playing games and watching DVDs. That day, it was pretty heavy snowfall, so I did not feel like trekking down the hill to the main road in my car and decided to stay in. That's when things started getting a bit weird. In our area, there were only two other cabins adjacent to ours, maybe a block away from each other. All other cabins aside from these two were around a mile away from ours. Surrounding us was mostly forest and very tall pine trees. Tall, this is important later on. Both these cabins were empty and from the past couple of days, I knew that no one was currently staying there. Gave enough background and I'm going to jump to the weirdness. Around midday while outside with my dog, I noticed what looked like footprints in the snow around the area surrounding our cabin. It was still snowing, so the footprints looked semi-fresh, like someone had been there in the last 20, 30 minutes before me. I thought that maybe someone was staying in the cabin near me that I may not have noticed. Maybe they were shut-ins like me. All right, whatever. The prints lead away from my cabin and they disappeared in the snow towards the denser part of the trees. Disregarded the footprints and went back inside. Nighttime came around and decided to head to bed. My dog Midnight was laying on the bed with me when I noticed his ears perk up to a standstill listening position. This was followed by him quickly jumping off the bed and running downstairs to the living room. I lay in bed and stayed silent. I was kind of freaked out and could hear him moving around downstairs back and forth. 
After around five minutes, he ran back upstairs to me and started to do his doggy dance for the sign that he had to pee or that he wanted to go outside. Shit. Well, fine. I can't say no to him. So we both went downstairs to the outside driveway for him to his thing. Only he didn't want to pee. As soon as we were outside, he started to pull on his leash, trying to drag me to where he wanted to go. He kept looking into the dense part of the trees where the prince had been earlier. But he also kept sniffing the side of the house and looking up towards the roof. After he figured out that I was not going to go to where he wanted, he sat himself down and just stared into the darkness. A bit unusual for him, but all right. Maybe there are forest animals out there that he wants to chase down. But fuck this, did not want to chance anything, so I pulled him back inside and we both headed back upstairs. Around half an hour later, I was lying in bed when I heard what sounded like hooves walking on my roof. It was only a series of around six steps and I rationalized that it could be a pine cone falling from a tree onto the roof or maybe a kind-hearted forest animal running around. But here's the thing, the steps seemed to be spaced apart like a man length stride. So it was really freaking me out. Midnight also heard the noise and was quick to run to the balcony screen door, expecting for me to let him out. All right, you know what? I'm a tough guy, and at the time considered myself to be fairly well built and strong enough to handle myself. So I grabbed my coat and shoes along with my cigarettes and flashlight and went out onto the balcony. Fuck it, right? As soon as I was outside, I lit up my cigarette and started canvassing the roof with my light. Nothing there and the snow on top was undisturbed. Weird. Must have been all my head. What about midnight hearing the noise? Maybe he was feeding off my fear or paranoia. I started to calm down and relax again. By the way, I am shaking right now and my heart is beating hard as I am typing this next bit. My eyes started to adjust to the darkness and I kept smoking and just staring at the stars and trees next to our cabin. That's when I saw it. In a tree that was a little taller than our cabin and around 20 feet from the balcony, I saw what looked like a man crouched in a squatting position in between two branches. It was squatted on one branch and its arms were extended above its head, holding onto the branch above it. Fuck me. What the fuck is that? I wasn't sure if I was really seeing this thing and stood just staring and sat there motionless. I noticed Midnight stand up and start pacing behind me and lightly barking at the same time. The thing still did not move. I put my cigarette out and was debating on shining the light in the thing's direction, but something in my head kept screaming not to. So I walked backwards to the inside of the room and pulled Midnight with me. Once inside, I locked the door and shined the light in the thing's direction, but there was nothing there. I shut the curtains to the screen door and retreated back to bed. But later on in the night, I heard light tapping at the screen door, like someone was tapping on the glass with their fingers. It was consistent and did not stop for nearly an hour. Midnight seemed to stare at the door, but he wouldn't go near it anymore. The weirdest part was that I had a feeling like someone was inviting me to open the door. But at the same time, I kept hearing my dad's voice in my head telling me to stay in bed and not do it. I listened to my dad's voice and just stayed where I was passed out eventually and woke up in the morning and everything was normal. The rest of week I spent there was non-eventful and nothing else out of the ordinary happened. I totally admit that it could have been all in my head. A lot of stuff was going on at the time so I was pretty fucked up from all the drama. Story 4 I grew up in the Arctic. In the town I lived in, as long as it was a clear night, it was an extremely normal occurrence to see all sorts of strange lights move across the sky. Keep in mind the winter is long in the Arctic which means longer amounts of time being spent under the stars. It's quite beautiful, as long as you don't mind the cold so much. Sometimes I would drive a snowmobile a few kilometers out of town, shut it down, and just lay down on the snow, looking up at the majesty of it all. The only thing disturbing the silence being the occasional breeze. The northern lights are also a common occurrence. Doesn't happen every day, but often enough that they start getting ignored after a while, as long as they aren't too spectacular anyway. On one particular night, without asking my parents, it was their snowmobile, I decided to go on one of my midnight drives out of town. I drove a few kilometers over the hills to find a spot devoid of light pollution from town, shut off the machine, and settled into a good spot to look up and be retrospective. It wasn't all that interesting a scene. A few satellites passing here and there, 
some relatively boring activity affecting the magnetic field, etc. And then I started noticing a clicking noise. At first, I thought it was the sound of the snow machine cooling down, as engine expands and contracts a lot in the cold. But the source of the sound definitely wasn't coming from that direction. My next thought was, there must be an animal nearby, in which case I need to get out of there fast. You don't really want to mess with a wild animal. But the clicking is far too regular for an animal to produce it. It was fairly mechanical sounding. And again, the source of the sound isn't coming from anywhere around me laterally. It was coming from up. So naturally I look up determined to ascertain the origin of this strange noise. I see what I always see, stars, northern lights, a lazy satellite crossing the sky, all normal stuff. But before I dismiss it altogether and begin heading home, I notice something strange in the Aurora Borealis. There were three rather strong points of light. I ignored them at first thinking they were oddly symmetrical stars, but this proved false. They were definitely getting brighter. I kept staring in morbid fascination as they grew stronger and stronger yet still only remaining single points in the sky. All the while, the clicking noise is getting louder and louder and more pronounced. Almost like someone started with tapping a pen on a desk to clacking billiard balls together inside my head. Then it stops. The lights are gone, the clicking is not heard, and aside from being a little stiff, cold, and rather petrified, I'm fine. So I jump back on the snowmobile thinking maybe I'm going crazy. The machine takes a little longer than usual to start up, and I'm beginning to worry, but soon it's running, and I'm heading back to town. As I'm driving back, several plausible scenarios as to what occurred are running through my head. I'm thinking it could have been a helicopter from the mine, or some strange northern lights behavior, etc. Probably not that big a deal. I pull up to my house. Lights are all dark. Strange. It wasn't that late when I left. Open outer door as quietly as possible. Remove winter gear, enter inner door. House is quiet, really quiet. My parents are teachers and are usually up late marking or watching TV. All I'm thinking is I have to get to bed without anyone noticing. Proves to be easy as I'm soon under my covers. I go to set my alarm for the next day. All of the sudden, everything makes sense. Engine hard to start, stiff, rather chilly. Nobody up when I was gone what felt like relatively short period of time. It was almost 11 p.m. when I left, and now it was creeping up on 6 a.m. I stood staring at clicking lights for almost seven hours. I never ended up sleeping that night, and I don't go on late night snow machine rides anymore. Story five, it was in my first year at university, completely new to the city and its surroundings. One evening, my friend and I decided to take a trip to the mall. It was 8 p.m. and we got on a bus that my friend claimed would take us to the mall. We ended up at an empty bus terminal, and it was around 10 at that time. We waited and waited for another bus back, and there was no one there but us. A while later, an old man walked by and told us that since it's so late, another bus won't be coming for an hour or so. He told us to turn and walk down the road, and we'll find a bus stop in the middle where a bus will soon come. We followed his instructions and entered this single-lane road with tall trees on each side. There were only a few street lamps working, so the area was dimly lit. The road was sort of built on a slant. Our bus stop was in middle, so we could see all the way up the road and down the road. And it was a single lane road. All we could see was the road and trees on either side for at least half a km on each side. Anyways, so we're waiting and waiting. My phone battery died and my friend had forgotten hers in her dorm room. We were starting to think there won't be any bus coming and started to panic. Then as we were waiting, I turned around to see two kids with backpacks walking down the road. I was relieved to see them, and so was my friend. When they were close by, I asked them if they knew about any buses coming. There were two kids, maybe around 12, 13. One was a boy, and other was a girl. Both had backpacks. Here is our conversation, not exact, but close. Me. Hey, do you know if there are any buses coming? Boy. Let me check Take's phone out, walks towards the bus stop sign, but it's empty and doesn't say the timing nor the stop number, just a picture of a bus. I knew this from before. Me. The timings aren't there and there's no number to text either. I've looked at it before. Boy. Still looking at phone. Oh, it's okay. Your bus will be here in 10 minutes, I think. Meanwhile, during this conversation, my friend started talking to the girl. 
Girl, where are you guys from? Friend, we just started university here. What about you? Girl, oh, we're in school and we're just going back home from school. Friend, oh, okay. After the boy told me that the bus would be here in 10 minutes, I turned my head to tell my friend this, turned my head back to thank the boy, and he was gone. Gone. The girl and the boy were nowhere to be seen. I literally probably looked away for a second, Max. We both looked down the road, up the road, and by the trees. They had a fence around them, but even if they went there, we would have seen them. I literally looked away for a second. Needless to say, both of us were scared as hell until our bus arrived. It was the last bus, and it was around 12.17 a.m. when the bus came. I know because we asked the time from the bus driver. I asked my brother about the area later. I didn't tell him what happened. He said that there's a graveyard there. And then it hit me that what the hell would two 13-year-olds be doing in the middle of fucking nowhere coming back from school at midnight? I didn't believe in paranormal activities, but I can't seem to find an explanation for this one. Thanks for watching. Don't leave before leaving a like to this video, also hit the subscribe button to support my work. And as always, have a horrific nightmare my dear.